Okay, this is a uh, quick vid to show you uh, my bandpass history, a bit of software that I wrote a few years ago, but I've just uh, updated and made available via GitHub as a public release. Um, hence, it uh, starts off at 1.3.0, uh, so you can download it by uh, clicking on this and uh, the MSI or the zip and there's the uh, virus total info for it. There have been some false positives on this so uh, uh, be wary of that. It, it's it's virus free but at the moment the AI systems are thinking there's something in there when there's, uh, when there's not definitely not. A bit annoying but there we are. Right so when you get it downloaded and installed um, it will uh, Put a desktop icon, or at least I think it does. If not, then it's in in here. So band pass history, and this is how it starts up. Um, probably further up there on the on the top left of the screen. And there's a couple of options uh, down here. You've got settings, which defines the UDP client where it gets all the information from, and this tallies up with. WSJTX in this example uh, reporting here UDP server so there's the, the, the IP that it's bound to and there's the uh, port that it's on which is the same as that and hitting on default will just uh, default all that to whatever's normally uh, in use by WSJTX so when um, WSJTX decodes uh, some data be it FT8, FT4, whatever, JT9, it will send all that out, uh, UDP and bandpass history will see it. And there we go. So that was that cycle, and it's found all these signals. And what bandpass history attempts to do is work out where it thinks would be the best place for you to transmit. And at the moment, it's thinking uh, here where this yellow indicator is. Unfortunately, WSJTX, and I'm not sure about uh, JTDX, certainly when I wrote this a while ago, there was no way to tell the software where, tell WSJTX where to put the transmit. So the only way to do it is to move it. Uh, you can move it over here. Uh, of course, as you can see, that red uh, marker is moving up there and it's moving in uh, bandpass history as well. And of course, you can also right click here, set as um, set as your or TX and RX position. And this, of course, is the WSJTX uh, graph. Um, and as you can see, the red here is where the red is there. The bandpass history is now thinking that the best place would be up here. So just, well, now it's moved back to uh, there because some signal came up there. Um, so that's how it works. And you can set the scale of this. So uh, just by hitting on the 3K uh, scale. So it will always set 3K to be the edge of the window. So we can use that to position on that left edge there and then move this to the 3k point which is there and then hit 3k and then that is a uh, scale to 3k so that bright signal is this bright orange here and that bright signal there was that bright orange and it's still thinking this is the best position this yellow indicator it's now moved so it now thinks uh, there is the best position and you can weight that location by dragging this uh, right uh, this red thing around and it will only uh, be valid between these markers which you can position as well so if you wanted to work the lower section of the frequency range you can do that and it still weights it on this uh, red marker you can use this option here edges which will literally find the minimum and maximum signal and set these green markers automatically. So it's now using the whole range and we can still weight it with this uh, red slider. Ignore my call. So if somebody comes back to me 
on my frequency, for instance, then it would ignore, it, it essentially ignores anything that has your call sign in it. Clear, clears everything from the uh, display, like so. I forgot to mention this uh, seconds display, so that's going to display 300 seconds worth of history uh, in here, and uh, five minutes worth. Um, and if you uh, reduce this, you can use mouse wheel uh, to do that, or click on these up and down arrows. How long to show uh, uh, historic signals for? And you've got uh, some details there. So negative 19 was the minimum SNR, positive 23 is the maximum so far, and the signal to noise uh, ratio average is uh, negative 0.2 right now. And you can view all that on the chart. Uh, it saves the position of all this. You can have it show on startup, curve lines, how many hours to display it for, and all that sort of stuff. So you can leave this uh, running and monitor uh, the activity of a band with that. You have the locator square, which comes from uh, WSJTX in this setting here and the frequency that uh, WSJTX is looking at there. A donate button if you're uh, so inclined to uh, hit that. That would be uh, much appreciated. And this 174 milliseconds, I'll quickly explain what that is. That is the average. So this is the delta time of each of these signals compared to your current time. And the average of all of those, excluding the crazy, crazy ones where some, you know, somebody's got a clock there that's 1.8 seconds out of time, out of, out of spec. So it'll ignore that one. Um, but on average, we're 190, uh, 79 milliseconds away from everyone else. Uh, even though I'm running Dimension 4, which, uh, um, sets my uh, PC based on a network time protocol server. Uh, I'm still 180 milliseconds away from where we should be. So what we can do, we can fix that issue. We can run band pass history in administrator mode. So if we right click on here, run as admin, say yes, you'll see that these buttons are now available. And when it's got a, a load of signals, this fixed time will appear. So we'll let it run through a few cycles. Incidentally, this plus or minus just does that. So um, it will move the clock uh, plus or minus uh, that amount of milliseconds. So we'll let it run through a few cycles and then we'll hit this fixed time and it will attempt to um, do the essentially adjust the clock to bring that uh, lower so we'll leave it run a, a few more cycles and, and uh, get some sort of average number here and then we'll hit fix time so we'll do it after this uh, after this next cycle so we'll see what this goes to so we're 188 out currently 190 so we'll hit fix time now so we've clicked that clears everything off this set of data probably won't be used because WSJTX has just realized that the times change and nothing will decode correctly so it doesn't do anything so the next cycle we should see this um, we should see this uh, gradually fix itself so we're slightly ahead of time here but minus 38 so we'll wait for a few more uh, bits of data to come in and see where we get to. So there we go, with three milliseconds out of the average now. And we'll leave this uh, run a few more uh, cycles. But what it means is you can be out working portable or whatever, and as long as you can get something to decode. Um, and you can obviously see that as long as you get the start signals close to the green line you can use these manual adjusters to adjust your clock so it starts to decode and then when it comes up with some um, number here you can then hit fix time 
and obviously it'll uh, bring everything in line and it means that you're roughly um well we're 20 milliseconds away from everybody's average over the last 300 seconds so yes it's uh, it's quite a good way to uh, to align your clocks to the data obviously if everybody was out then you're going to be as much out as they will be but at least you'd be able to work each other um so that's that feature uh, there so that's a quick overview anyway of bandpass history as i say it's uh, i developed it quite a few years ago um and it's uh, it has been on my blog but um an older version and this is a more up to date version uh, so there we are and of course it works with uh, different modes as well so if we were to change mode to sort of ft4 uh, hopefully there's some signals on here you can see that it's changed here to ft4 and there's the ft4 signals and they've obviously widened up now because they're uh, increased bandwidth and because we're using this edges the green the green line is uh, moving there's a very faint one there uh, we could hit uh, clear again and the edges go right out so there you go there's that faint one again and it thinks the best place for us is at one one well it now thinks up to close to 2000 so we can set this and of course this red marker is the red marker there that you see this red box so that's your transmit frequency but it thinks by there is about the best place we could uh, we could be and uh, yeah so that's uh, that's how bandpass history uh, works and if you find any issues with it or anything uh, just uh, put a post up on um, on uh, github or on uh, on discord uh, on the theist discord server i hang out there most of the time all right cool cheers